Okay, now, after a five-month auditioning process, you auditioned for The Voice on the 10th of April singing Where the Streets Have No Name by U2 and the chairs didn't turn. He stated it was not a good feeling, however, got him inspired, angry and ready to work harder than ever to bring us his original music. On, on, the, on his The Voice audition clip, he writes that the best way he could deal with it was to write a better song that the winner would eventually release. Mark, welcome to the KK Fact on Radio Rhythmus and you're speaking live on air with the KK Rock Chick, Rula Krakalis. And in the studio, we also have the talented Yana Stavru of The Voice last year in 2020. Mark, how are you? Yeah, I'm great. How are you guys doing? Good, and thank you so much for calling in. That's a pleasure. Thank I believe you. you no, not a problem. I believe you're on your way to a gig there in Sydney. What's that all about? Oh, I'm actually just doing a little acoustic gig down um, in the North Shore in Sydney at the Narrabeen Sands Hotel, and um, we're pretty much set up. So as soon as I finish talking with you, I'll uh, be able to jump on stage and play. Oh, fantastic, fantastic, Mark. Now, yeah. Mark, firstly, I want to congratulate you on your newborn you. son. He's absolutely adorable. How does he's it feel to be a dad? Yeah, it feels great. Unfortunately, he's not home with us yet. He's, he's uh, spent uh, the last month or the first month of his life in hospital. But um, but he's doing really good and, you know, he's super cute. So he's made me happy. Oh, and have you got a name for him yet? Yeah, his name is Julian. Oh, that's beautiful. All the very best with Julian. Thank you And so I'm much. sure pretty soon he'll be in your arms at home. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> Do you think your little man one day might follow in his father's footsteps? Look, to be honest, I'd prefer if he, <laughs> if he took up, a, you know, soccer or something or something sporty. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, a, it's a very hard industry, the music game, um, unless he picked it up and just loved it. But I wouldn't encourage him to, like, go and be a musician. <laughs> Not at all. Actually, Yana's also shaking her head. She totally agrees with what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark, how did you feel when those chairs didn't turn? Um, look, it's, you know, uh, rejection comes in all forms and, and um, at all different times in life. Luckily for me, I was um, in my early 30s when this rejection came, so I'm, I'm a bit more resilient. Um, although it still felt bad, um, then and there I just thought, geez, you know, I've got to stop worrying about what people think or or worrying about getting someone else's approval that's what really hit home when they didn't turn the chairs but that didn't um, crush your your confidence in knowing that you have talent i mean yeah. I, I from an outsider watching the voice isn't yep. it they're looking for something specific but that doesn't necessarily mean that um you won't move forward they're just looking for yeah. something is that how it works with the voice uh, yeah, look, I think any of these shows, they are looking for something specific and probably most uh, most of these shows actually have a winner or an idea of what they want before the show actually goes to air. Okay. And I think these are decisions made between the production company who actually designed the show and then the record label who come to obviously support the artist who eventually wins. I think they've got their mould what they want. Um, and if you don't fit into it, then unfortunately you're, yeah, you're just another person that's auditioning. Uh, you know, that's what, that's what I feel it is. Yeah, Yana's also nodding that. Yana, you got something to say? Yeah, I totally agree. I think they kind of have an idea and a structure prior to the show. And then if you kind of don't fit in that or, you know, you only go up to a certain point and then that's it, you know, you're kicked out. So. But, but then you're both, you're both given an opportunity. Exactly, yeah. And that's... you're getting, yeah. And, and Mark, with you, I mean, you've got thousands of followers on your Facebook. Being right, in The Voice yeah. gave you um, a national exposure. Did that mm -hmm. increase your audience as well? Look, I'm going to be pretty honest. I mean, the, the exposure I got on The Voice wasn't great. They only played about 15 or 20 seconds of my performance. For whatever reason, I'm not sure. I, I, although I did get, a, a, you know, a lot of messages inboxing me on Facebook sort of, you know. Yeah, I did read that. They were all very, very positive. Yeah, trying to support me and, and so what. But look, I really think that these shows individually, I don't know what the other contestants who didn't get through feel, but really this really separates the men from the boys because to go ahead in this industry, you have to be strong enough to get criticised. Yeah. Um, you got to cop the rejection on the chin. And those who are not strong enough will fall away and yeah, will go on to do whatever they're going to do. But um, I know for myself, and I encourage those who really want to pursue this as a career, it's just, you know, having Ricky Martin not turn around or Delta and that is not the end of the road. Uh, they're lucky enough to have a career that we all want. And if we want, if we want what they got, we've got to work harder than them. That's all it is. 
That's exactly right. Work hard. What made you audition for The Voice? I mean, you've got your singles coming out, which we will be playing yep. once shortly. What actually made you audition? Now, yeah, explain I, your words. Yeah, absolutely. Look, this is going to sound bizarre, but I was sitting on the couch one day at home. My partner had gone out for the night and I was pretty bored. And um, I noticed that there were the auditions coming up. I think it was a Facebook message. I noticed someone that I know was going to audition and they put it up as a status. So I went online and found out the, the procedure and thought it was really easy. I just uh, I got my iPhone out and I recorded myself doing uh, Don't, Look Back in An- Don't Look Back in Anger by Oasis. And I played that acoustic and sent it in and I got in. Um, there was no real big idea behind auditioning, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's a positive thing for anyone to, to try and do. So, Do you regret it now? I kind of do. Um, I kind of do, but... At the same time, something really clicked in me when they didn't turn their chairs and all of a sudden I've got all this energy and it's probably like, you know, it, it's a good anger it, it, um, and hopefully it doesn't come across as a, as a bitter anger, but it's, it's a good anger that it's like, I need to do this. And um, yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe, that's what, maybe that's what you young ones need anyway to get that push. Yeah, it, it can be. Like I said, this does separate the men from the boys, I think. And I, I just, when those chairs didn't turn, I knew that um, this is it now, that I really, I can't rely on anyone's um, opinion of what I do. And whether those chairs are turning or not, I'm going to release them a single. I'm going to connect with fans. I'm going to build a fan base. And I'm going to do all of this from the ground up, which at the end of the day is what a record label does for you. So mm. why not us as the artists start doing this? So I do this full time, Monday to Friday, I don't work. And I spend all well, day Well, it is a job. You still, you are working. It is a job. Yeah, well, I mean, that's right. I do, I do my uh, my gigs on the weekend, and I do my little shows. But um, I spend all day uh, liaising and, and just connecting with, with people that like the music and building a, a small fan base. So I'm just going to start from the ground up. That's where I'm going. Very good. Well, now, you, you. as I stated earlier, that the best way you felt you could deal with it was to write a better song than the winner would eventually <laughs> release. So I, I had to put that in there. You know, I got to be confident. No, I like that. It is, uh, that's what it's all about, and that's why I also chose to speak to you while I had Yana here because of you yeah. were inspiring your words, and that's what it's all about. Uh, moving forward, and when something doesn't go wrong, find the light at the end of the tunnel, as they say. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, so for our listeners, a song which was inspired by the setback of not having gone through beyond the blind auditions of The Voice 2013, written and sung by Mark Da Costa. So it's Da Costa, D A. Yeah, Here right. it is Mark Da Costa, Hope, Faith, Love. Sometimes we Thank you. Like a bird. Enjoy, and we will be talking to you shortly. Okay, bye bye. And sometimes we don't hear the heart and follow the mind. 